Hi and welcome to the Lymph Info Show. Uh, this month we're going to be talking about Lipedema Awareness Month. Uh, which is the month of June. Uh, see, we've talked a lot about lymphedema, but lipedema is another condition, and what it means is lip means fat, and edema means water or swelling. So it basically means water in the fat tissues. Um, lipedema is a really complex condition, and we don't know a lot about it. Um, what we do know is still quite confusing and sometimes contradictory, um, but we're slowly getting to know more and more. Um, what we do know is that the health professionals themselves aren't very aware of it and that's part of our purpose is to keep raising that awareness and improving people's lives by getting more knowledge out there. So the first thing to know about lipedema is it is a congenital connective tissue or fat disorder. Um, it was first identified back in 1940 by a couple of physicians at the Mayo Clinic in, in America, um, Dr. Edgar Hines and Dr. Edgar Allen. I don't know why they're both called Edgar, lovely coincidence. Um, and it's what we see with lipedema is it affects only women, and we think that the number is about 11%. Um, again, because it's poorly understood and very, very often misdiagnosed, uh, we don't have a clear idea of those numbers, but we think by sort of extrapolating out on statistics that it's about 11% of women, um, which interestingly enough is actually the same number of women that will be diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, we know a lot more about that than we do about lipedema. So who gets lipedema? Woman only. Uh, the only men that get it uh, tend to have other hormonal problems going on at the same time, so very low testosterone levels and perhaps high estrogen levels as well. Um, but essentially, it's I think it's like something like one percent of lipedema cases, or, or quarter of a percent, or something like that. I don't think we again we don't really know the numbers. Um, it's a very low percentage of men, but you'll be surprised at how many people you will now notice walking down the street that have uh, signs of lipedema. So what does it look like? Uh, you'll see an increased amount of fat, particularly around the hips, the thighs and the legs, and in some people also the arms are affected. The torso is quite normal or even small relative to the limbs, um, so what you'll see is people with big bottom girls even you could say, and they've got a skinny little waist. Um, the hands and feet are usually unaffected. So with lymphedema, we say that the hands and feet are normally affected, but with lipedema, they're normally not. So that adds to that disproportionate body shape that a lot of women with lipedema will have, with these big legs or big arms or both, and tiny little feet and tiny little hands and tiny little waist. For a lot of women, not everyone, but for a lot of women, lipedema is really painful and sensitive to the touch. Um, and people talk about, you know, if their kids want to sit on their laps, it hurts, or if they're standing for a long period of time, they just ache. Um, and it's very hard to understand just how painful the condition can be for some people. Another sign of lipedema is very easy bruising. So when you tolerate your kids climbing on your lap, you get a big bruise from it. Um, and a lot of women sort of look at their legs and go, well, how the, where did that come from? I don't remember doing that. Um, a lot of women talk about that anyway, but it's particularly strong in women with lipedema. Like I say, it's not well understood, um, and we don't really know why people get it or how they get it. Um, we do know that there is usually a family history of it. So if you go back in the generations of your family, and that can be on both your, your father or your mother's side, um, and you may realise that there were women in the family that may have had a bigger bottom or um, big legs that they, oh, they just talked about their fat legs um, and that they were just a bit chunky and a bit fat. Um, what we tend to know about that is that um, we tend to see triggers of people developing or, or experiencing the first signs of lipedema at the times of hormone changes. So puberty, childbirth, menopause, can also be stress related um, with lifestyle change, or some people also get it after triggers such as surgery or some accident or injury. Um, and what we see there is that the fluid and the connective tissue are remodeling in terms of those changes in the body.
So that fat that gets laid down in the tissues is different to regular fat. Uh, the cell structure, the type of cell that the fat is, is quite different. It uh, looks different under a, um, well not even under a microscope, you don't even need a microscope if you did a, a dissection of two different people with normal adipose tissue, is what we call fat, and um, lipedema fat, they would look quite different. Um, and there's more of it on these women. Um, what we also know is it doesn't shift with diet and exercise. Um, so it's actually really possible to um, have an eating disorder because you're starving yourself trying to lose the weight off your legs and you, you keep going to see doctors and things and they just tell you that you're a bit lazy and you need to eat less. And in actual fact, you will still have a tiny upper body and still have the fat on the legs and that can't shift. Um, diet and exercise won't access it. So it's not fat in the sense of this person is overweight and they're living a poor lifestyle. Uh, it's a congenital condition where the tissues are actually different and that connective tissue in the, in the skin is different. So we've known about this condition for about 80 years and yet it's still really poorly understood. And that under recognition or misdiagnosis can really delay the identification of lipedema and that can also really delay the management of lipedema. Um, so we can look at progression. One of the things we know about lipedema is that um, a big hallmark of it is inflammation and that results in tissue fibrosis and pain. Now tissue fibrosis is the overgrowth or hardening or even scarring of tissues. Um, so that skin can become quite thickened and lumpy and hard and when you get fibrosis, it gets even harder for the fluid to come out. Um, those tissues can also become quite numb or be cold to the touch. But getting it diagnosed is a stretch. Um, like I say, it's often misdiagnosed as obesity or lymphedema. A lot of doctors have, have had someone go and see them and say, I've been told I might have lipedema and they say there's no such thing it's lymphedema you have lymphedema um, and it's not they are separate conditions just the same as with lymphedema there aren't any tests or biological markers so you can't have a blood test and say boom that's it you have lipedema but you can look at things like inflammatory levels in the cells so if you're getting diagnosed you'll have um, there'll be four things that the person diagnosing you will look at First of all, they'll take a bit of a history. Are there any affected family members? Because remember, it's that, that family history. When did it begin? Did it begin at a time of hormonal weight or shape change? Do you have difficulty losing the fat? Do you exercise and diet like mad and it still doesn't change? They're also looking to see if that enlargement of the legs continues to get bigger, even if after elevation. Um, is there that easy bruising? Are the veins fragile? And we also look at things like if we have a, a physical exam, we'll be looking for what's called disproportionately increased loose connective tissue on the limbs. So there's more connective tissue, it's quite loose. Um, it's even on both sides of the body. With lymphedema, you'll often see it more on one side than the other. Um, and if you feel the skin, if you run actually dig, I won't say dig, but if you move, move your fingers around into that skin, you can often feel nodules. And they can be big lumps, like marbles, or they may be as tiny as a, rice, a grain of rice. And having that palpation may be quite painful. Um, it's not always, but it can be. A lot of women also have the abdomen um, as also being affected and quite bloated. Um, and then we also see the limb swelling and there may be pitting or there might not be. Now pitting is when we press our finger into the tissue and hold it there and when we take it away after 30 or 60 or 90 seconds, depending on how long we feel like holding it, it will leave an indentation in the tissue. And what that is, is it's pushing the extra fluid out. Um, and it may take a little while for that pit to refill. And we're also looking to see if those hands and feet are affected or not. 
other things that women with lip edema also experience. They frequently are hypermobile. That means really, really flexible. You see these lovely images all over the internet of big women doing yoga and they're sort of doing back bends and putting their heads on their toes and things like that. Um, that's a really common, what we call comorbidity. So it's, it's a really common condition that goes alongside um, lipedema or lipedema. Um, by the way, two different ways to pronounce it, lipedema, lipedema. They're both correct, just to confuse things even more. Um, so those hypermobile joints, being a connective tissue disorder, your, your the structures around your joints are also connective tissues, so they become quite lax, or can become quite lax. Um, and so it's really common for women to have joint problems, particularly knees and ankles. Um, the joints are lax anyway, they can't support it as well, but also there's the extra weight and the extra fluid in the body that just adds to the extra pressure. The Tissue may be less elastic, so it's less likely to recoil if you give it a pull. Um, and there may be signs of lymphedema as well. And part of the reason for that is as the lipedema progresses, that extra fatty tissue can compress the lymphatic system. And so you can get both conditions joined together. Um, also looking for things like non-lipedema obesity, because any form of weight gain does exacerbate lipedema. And in later stages of lipedema, there's also signs of metabolic diseases, um, and that could be a whole range of things that your doctor can talk to you about. Vascular disease is also really common, um, so varicose veins, poor circulation, and again, is that because the lipedema or lipedema fat is compressing on those systems, or is it all to do with the connective tissue being different? Uh, lots of possibilities there, and it is possible. I said you can get lipolymphedema. We've talked briefly before in other shows about a condition called phlebolymphedema, and that's when the blood vessels are a bit sloppy and they don't drain the, the blood back out. You can also get lipophlebedema and you can also get lipophlebolymphedema. Um, you can get the, the holy trinity if you like. So those are all sorts of things that someone will be looking at when they're doing a diagnosis. The physical exam can actually be for the entire body. Um, there is a fantastic video that we've actually got coming up on our Facebook page for the Lymph Info Trust, uh, which shows a physical exam being done by Karen Herbst uh, who is an endocrinologist from America and an expert in lipedema and Durkheim's disease, which is a related condition, but we're not going to go into that one today. Uh, and she does a really quite in-depth physical examination and an interview as well. There's two videos and they're really worth watching if you can get a chance. So we talked about the fat being different. Um, so the fat cells are much bigger than normal fat if you like and they may be a different colour and they'll also be fibres and connective tissues all the way through it so they do look very different and again if you get onto our Facebook page this month what we're doing this month is we've got a post every single day about lipedema uh, and there's also a photo of the fat cells um, the different types of fat cells and as I said um, diet is not able to control lipedema, lipedema. Um, another photo that we've got coming up on during the month is a photo of a woman with lipedema who is also anorexic. And it's quite shocking because her upper half is really quite gaunt and then her lower half has these very pudgy, spongy looking legs. Um, and she's probably spent a lifetime being told either by health professionals or by friends or family that she's big and she's fat and she's lazy and needs to exercise more. And that's a real problem that people with lipedema have. Um, there's, a, there's a really strong mix of poor self-esteem and some psychological problems and anxiety and feeling misunderstood by their doctors. I recently had a, a case in my own clinic of this absolutely gorgeous woman, she was 25, and she had heard that about 
she heard that I worked with people with edema and she asked if she could come and see me. And I just asked a few questions and on the phone before we even got started and I just sort of said, is there anyone else in your family like this? She said, yeah, my grandmother and my aunt. And I said, is it both sides? Is it, do you bruise quite easily? You're quite sore. So I just asked some of those questions. And she said, yeah, yeah, I do, actually. Um, and so I said, before you come and see me, just go and have a Google of lipedema on the internet and just tell me what you think when you come and see me. When she arrived in my clinic, she said, I said, how'd you feel about what you read? And she goes, I think it's me to a T. And then she told me about her experience with some doctors. Now her normal GP is fantastic, they have a really great relationship, but her doctor hadn't heard of it. Um, and the doctor did feel that it was probably genetic, but didn't go into any more detail than that. In the meantime, this um, woman had been um, off to Australia and done a little bit of travelling for a few weeks and then come back and in the interim had also had COVID. Now we know that lipedema has a very inflammatory component and COVID can affect people's inflammation markers and she was feeling quite inflamed and quite sore and just generally quite flared up as words she was using. So we had a good chat and she'd been back to see her G another GP. Her GP was away, so she saw a different GP. Now that GP looked at her medical history and at her prescriptions. And one of her prescriptions was medications for anxiety. And the doctor told her that she was being too sensitive and it was all in her head. I had the privilege and honor of being able to look at her in the eye and say this isn't in your head, this is real. Um, the tears in her eyes were genuine and she just said that she felt incredibly validated to finally understand what was going on and to understand that there were things that could be done that would help. Um, so that was it was quite enlightening to see just part of the problem of us not having enough information out there and enough understanding within the health community. Um, and also that blaming of being told that she was, it was in her, in, in her head. And I follow quite a few Facebook pages um, on social media about lipedema and it's a really common theme that comes through for a lot of women um, that they feel misheard or misunderstood. We know that the progression of lipedema is variable and unpredictable. So one person may have very slow progression, someone else may have quite quick progression and progress in different parts of the body than someone else, or in different parts of the legs even. And we know that hormonal changes are also big triggers. So I'll just talk you through the, the, these four basic stages. And the first stage, the skin looks quite normal, but it might be a little bit spongy to the touch. In stage two, those large fat deposits are starting to form indentations on the legs, especially around the knees and ankles. Um, and we often start seeing sort of um, a fat pad in the inside of the knee. At stage three, those fat deposits on the legs are getting quite bulky and they might be hanging over the hips or the knees or the ankles and the legs will feel really stiff and the fat beneath the skin will feel harder and more fibrotic. Remember that fibrosis is that thickening and hardening of the skin. Stage four um, are when the fat deposits are so large and extreme that the entire lymphatic system is affected. And we talked about how you can develop lipolymphedema. And that can lead to severe swelling, protruding growths, and even leaking from the skin. Uh, and this is when we start seeing people, stage three and four is when we start seeing people start to get quite disabled. Um, they may have trouble moving or walking. Uh, they may need the support of a walker. They may have trouble getting themselves dressed properly. They may have a lot of joint pain. Um, arthritis is really common. So we can see that it's, it's not just simply a matter of it being a bit of fat. It's actually 
more involved and more complex than that. So we know that if it's left untreated, it can damage the lymphatic vessels. And we know that it can also da uh, damage the blood vessels too. So how can we leave it, how can we treat it? Well, conservatively, we can treat it with combined decongestive therapy. And the gold standard treatment is actually with um, WAL, which is water assisted liposuction. And that has to be performed by specialist plastic surgeons. It's not a, considered a, cons a cosmetic procedure, it's considered a medical procedure. I think what we'll do is we'll wrap up for there now and I think I'll cover some more material in our next show about the treatment and what people can do to look after themselves at home. So have a look at our webpage, um, have a, it's lymphinfo.org.nz. Have a look at our Facebook page, there's going to be a lot of information there this month. Feel free to get on there and ask questions. Um, if you want help finding a therapist, get in touch, we can help you with that too. And then we'll um, discuss more next month. Thanks very much.